Why do we celebrate Veterans Day? When is the next Marvel superhero movie coming out? And what happens when you let a couple dozen Tasmanian devils loose? I'm Bethany Van Delft, and we'll get into all this and more on today's The 10 News, the show where, in way less time than it takes to recap the origin stories of all of the Avengers, we find out what's up in the world. Okay, Let's get into the 10 news. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm humbled by the trust and confidence you've placed in me. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. Who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. Over the weekend, the presidential election was called in favor of Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris. We talked in an earlier episode about the historic impact of Senator Harris's nomination, and now the U.S. has officially elected the first woman and person of color to the office of vice president. History made. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. And did you know that this was Joe Biden's third attempt to become president? His win came exactly 48 years to the day after he was first elected to the U.S. Senate. This is a great reminder to never, ever, ever give up. Congratulations to the new president-elect Joe Biden and Madam Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Tomorrow, November 11th, is Veterans Day, a day to honor those who have served in our country's military and to thank them for their sacrifices. To find out more, our friend Dylan, age 13, spoke with retired Air Force Major Courtney Davis. Hi, my name is Courtney Davis. I live in Morgan Hill, California, and I am the mom of two beautiful kids, Danica and DJ. So, Courtney, Veterans Day is coming up, and I know that you're a veteran, and that's really cool. So I'm just going to ask you um, (laughs) a few questions about what your service was like. Sure. The first thing that I want to ask you was, uh, is um, what branch of service were you in? I enlisted in the United States Air Force Reserve. Okay. And was there any, like, specific reason that you chose the Air Force? You know, truthfully, I was really influenced by my family as my entire family served in the military, my father, uncles, grandfather, the whole family. So uh, that was the biggest influence. And I graduated from high school at 17 years old and wasn't ready to start college right away. But I knew that at that time I wanted to go into the medical field. So I felt like joining the military would be a good stepping stone for my future career. I also received the GI Bill, which were funds that helped pay for my college tuition. I was deployed multiple times in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. My very last deployment was in 2006, and that was to Balad Air Force Base in Iraq. What rank were you? I started from the bottom as an Airman Basic or an E1, and I retired as an officer, a major, an O4. What was your job when you were deployed? So... While I was deployed, I was deployed as a medical technician, so my job was to take care of the troops. But right before I deployed, I had taken my boards to get my nursing license. So by the time I got into country, I found out that I had passed my boards. And at that point, that was when I first began my job as an official nurse. Were you nervous the first time you were deployed? I was absolutely terrified. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I quickly found out. What are you most proud of about your military service? I would say the most, I'm most proud of the time that I spent caring for the wounded veterans while I was deployed Um, to be able to give back to these selfless heroes who risked their lives for our country was an honor. And I learned a lot from them. What does Veterans Day mean to you? Veterans Day means to me, uh, it's a day to honor and celebrate the service of our past and present veterans who have fought for all the freedoms that we have today. What do you think is a good way for people to celebrate Veterans Day? Good question. I I would say 
not just Veterans Day, but any day, it's always nice to thank a service member. If you see one in uniform or one, you know, proudly wearing a retired hat, just say thank you for your service. We, we really appreciate that. What is something that you want kids to know about people in the military? I think a common misconception about the military is that we all get to fly in planes or uh, participate in combat. And that's, that's not true. Um, people in the military are ordinary folks who just do extraordinary things. And a lot of the careers that you can have in the military, you can also have in the civilian world or otherwise, you know, the workforce outside the military. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you so much. Thanks for that interview, Dylan. And Courtney, the 10 News, thanks you for your service. Earlier this month, a group of loud, ferocious, carnivorous creatures were let loose in Australia. Okay, don't panic. Conservationists released 36 Tasmanian devils, not the cartoon, the actual animal, in a sanctuary on the Australian mainland, 3,000 years after the animals had become extinct there. Awesome. The project, which included Australia's largest Tasmanian devil breeding program, took 16 years of work and is part of a bigger plan to reintroduce the animals into the wild. Good luck, little devils. And a special shout out goes out to Alexander in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who also knows a lot about Tasmanian devils. Thanks for sending us a note, Alex. And if any of you want to send us a fun fact or thoughts about the show, email us at hello at the 10 news.com. There's no doubt the coronavirus has complicated the movie landscape. As we reported in our episode from October 27th, many things are still uncertain. Thankfully, there's still plenty to get excited about. That brings us to the 10 News Screen Report. Today's Screen Report is all about Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU as we call it. Oh, this is so exciting. That includes all of the upcoming series and movies from the Marvel Studios that will be released between now and 2022. Here's a few things we're excited about. And by we, I mean me. Oh my gosh. Number one, Black Widow. Yes, coronavirus pushed back the release date of this highly anticipated flick all the way back to spring 2021, but we're still just as excited. Before I was an Avenger, I made mistakes. The movie is set in the wake of the Captain America Civil War movie, And we'll see Black Widow as she confronts her past as a former spy. And we'll see a performance from David Harbour, a.k.a. Hopper, on Stranger Things. That's pretty exciting. Number two, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Coronavirus brought filming of Marvel's Kung Fu movie to a halt back in February. But according to an Instagram post by Simu Liu, who portrays Shang-Chi, The movie wrapped shooting in October. This is Marvel's first superhero movie with an Asian lead and nothing was going to stop production on it. There's still no word on if it'll be released direct to home or in theaters, but you can bet MCU fans are excited to see this one either way. Number three, Moon Knight on Disney+. Plus. He may be a lesser known comic book hero than say Black Panther or Spider-Man, but there's definitely reason to get excited for this upcoming Disney Plus series. It'll star Oscar Isaac, who you may remember as Poe Dameron in the Star Wars sequel trilogy in the titular role of Moon Knight, a character who's drawn comparisons to Batman and has superpowers derived from Egyptian gods. You know you want to see this one. Well, that's our screen report. There's still much more to come in Phase 4, and there's no guarantee how we're going to see these movies. But one thing's certain, we can't wait. What Marvel release are you most excited for? Let us know.
It's time for your trivia question of the day. A Japanese startup recently ran a successful test of what futuristic invention? Was it A, a teleportation device, B, a flying car, or C, an arc reactor? Did you guess it? The answer is B. Back in August, a flying car prototype completed a four minute test flight and safely landed in a field in Japan. Awesome. The company behind it, which is backed by Toyota, says it has plans to make the flying car available to the public in 2023. Does that mean you're going to have to have a driver's license and a pilot's license? Hmm. Time's up. That is the end of the ten for today. You can catch new episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Ten News is a co production of Small But Mighty Media in collaboration with Next Chapter Podcasts and distributed by iHeartRadio. The Ten News writing team is led by editorial director Tracy Crooks with contributions from Stephen Tompkins. The creative producer is Jenner Pasqua. Marketing is led by Jacob Bronstein with social media and web support by Stephen Tompkins and Adam Farr. Editing and sound design by Pete Musto. Under the production direction of Jeremiah Tittle, executive producer Donald Albright, and show creator Tracy Leeds Kaplan round out the team. If you have questions about the show, a story idea, or just a fun fact you want to share, email us at hello at the 10 news.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the 10 News on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and thanks for listening to the 10 News. Now, go check out a picture of a Tasmanian devil if you've never seen one. They are the weirdest, cutest little things.